Our next section is TTP and hemolytic uremic syndrome, thrombotic, thrombocytopenic purpura, and hemolytic uremic syndrome. I've said part of this before with our kidney disorders, but I want to be able to say it again because it's not a large knowledge area, TTP and hemolytic uremic syndrome. Hemolytic uremic syndrome and thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura are essentially a different spectra of the same disease. They are both an abnormality of clumping out of platelets because when you have a cut in a blood vessel, what forms the primary hemostatic plug when you have a cut in a blood vessel? What holds the platelets to the endothelial lining? Here's endothelial lining. What holds platelets to the endothelial lining is that the platelets form the primary hemostatic plug. And the platelets are held to each other and they're held to the endothelial lining with von Willebrand's factor. Von Willebrand's factor is the adhesive glue that holds the primary hemostatic plug together. So you could say that von Willebrand's factor creates the clot. It is the clot creator. Now, that clot later on will get stabilized and made more permanent with fibrin if it's there for a long time. What stops it from overpropagating? In other words, what stops those platelets from overpropagating and closing off the blood vessel? Because if the platelets continue to clog up and clump out, it would actually close off that blood vessel. And the answer is, is that there is an enzyme. There's an enzyme that actually breaks up von Willebrand's factor called ADOMPS13. And ADOMPS13 dissolves, it is the kind, it dissolves, it destroys, it dissolves and destroys von Willebrand's factor. And ADOMPS13 is what's missing in TTP. Now, five years ago, I would have considered this to be a hematology fellow level of knowledge, even though it's been known for, I don't know, 10, 15 years. I mean, I've known it for 10 years, and I'm not even a hematologist. So it has made the leap, though, to being a standard test. See, you can actually get a clinical test looking at a decrease in the level of a DOMS-13. And if you look at the level of ADOMPS-13, it should be down because what ends up happening is that the red cells run into that platelet strand. They run into that platelet strand and they get smashed and destroyed and squished. And that is called microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. That's also called schistocytes helmet cells, fragmented cells, intravascular hemolysis, schistocytes, helmet cells, fragmented cells, destroyed, broken up, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, micro, small, angio, blood vessel, hemolytic anemia, schistocytes, helmet cells, fragmented cells, or you can just say intravascular hemolysis, runs into those platelet strands. Now this shows you why in TTP, no matter, and hemolytic uremic syndrome, no matter how low the platelets are, even if it says 30,000, 20,000, 10,000, no matter how low the platelets are, we don't transfuse platelets. No matter how low the platelets are, if you give platelets to TTP and hemolytic uremic syndrome, you will make it worse because if you give platelets, you'll see that more platelets will clump out, more platelets will block up those blood vessels, more platelets will attach to the endothelial lining and damage the blood vessels. Low platelets don't give platelets. So you have low platelets, you have intravascular hemolysis and renal dysfunction. That's the three things for hemolytic uremic syndrome. Is the association with he E. coli 0157H7 real? Is the association with E. coli 0157H7 a real association or a bullshit association? It's a real association. If you add in these other two things like fever and neurological problems, then all together, these three things and these two, making five total, that's TTP. Now, I don't get hung up about this, and neither does your exam, 
because it's very rare for all five things to be there simultaneously. Most of the time, it's just a few. The closest thing to a test is hemolysis and a decreased level of ADOMPS-13. Now, this can look a bit like DIC. Low platelets, clumpy things. But the difference is DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation, will give an elevated PTT and an elevated prothrombin time in INR. And TTP and HUS, those tests will be normal. And that is a biggie because that can save you from answering the wrong answer to the most likely diagnosis question. The most likely diagnosis can be based on that PT-PTT. Fragmented cells. So what are you taking off when you treat these people with plasmapheresis? TTP and HUS when it's severe. Don't give platelets. Don't give antibiotics. Don't give platelets. Don't give antibiotics. We use plasmapheresis. What are you taking off when you do plasmapheresis? What are you taking off? And the answer is you're not taking off anything. You are putting something on. The plasmapheresis and TTP and HUS, you're not taking off anything. You're putting something on. Now, in Guillain-Barre, plasmapheresis takes off antibodies. In myasthenic crisis, plasmapheresis takes off abnormal antibodies. In Guillain-Barre and in myasthenic crisis, and in von Will, uh, certainly in uh, Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia, you're taking off abnormal immunoglobulins. But this is different. Here, what you're doing is you're adding back the ADOMPS-13, which is the clot destroyer. TTP and HUS is a small knowledge base. That's pretty much it. We don't know why it happens most of the time. We know HIV happens. We talk about drugs like Ticlopidine, which we don't really use anymore. A lot of it's idiopathic. Certain medications just happens. The biggest question for you is the platelet question, I'm telling you. The second biggest is don't give antibiotics. And this one, if you know what I have in front of you on the board, you will get every single question right. So our belief with myself as a team leader for this group, I don't believe in giving you baby crap because you're a medical student or you're studying for step two complex two. I think that you, the difference between knowing to the level of a modest grade and excellent grade is about an extra 10%. And in this knowledge base, that extra 10% is knowing about Adam 13. You see, platelets with von Willebrands are the clot creator. Fibrin comes and preserves it, stabilizes it. It's the clot preserver. Adams 13 breaks up the von Willebrands and is the clot destroyer, creator, preserver, destroyer. Fibrin itself will get chopped up by plasmin. Fibrin itself gets chopped up by plasmin, and fibrin gets chopped up into D-dimers. D-dimers, that's what we get in DIC. But fibrin won't get chopped up if it is subsequently preserved, preserved, preserved by something called factor 13, clot stabilizing factor. Fibrin ends up being destroyed by plasmin chopped up in the D-dimers, unless it is preserved by factor 13. So from the top, platelets are created into a clot von von Willebrand's clot creator. They are preserved by fibrin. They are destroyed by DOMPS 13. Fibrin is created by thrombin. It is preserved by factor 13. It is destroyed by plasmin. So where are my good Hindus out there, huh? And Elizabeth Barrett Browning, Elizabeth Barrett Browning, who did the poem, that said she was married to Shelley, okay, Robert Bish Shelley, who said, How, you know that when it says, 
Um, how, how, how do I love thee? How do I love you? I love you, I love thee to the depth and breadth and height that my soul can reach when feeling out of bounds for ideal grace. But she also wrote, earth, earth is crammed, crammed with heaven. And every tree is a burning bush. Those who see it will take their shoes off. And all the rest can at least eat the blueberries. So what we see here with the clot creator, preserver, destroyer, creator, preserver, destroyer. We see Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, Vama, Vishnu, Shiva. Earth is crammed with heaven. And every tree is a burning bush. Those who see it will take their shoes off. And all the rest can at least eat the blueberries.